Good afternoon and welcome to the May Day edition of Midday Live on TV3. I am Baiz Oseko for President of the Musicians Union of Ghana. The headlines this afternoon. <music> President Ekufuado launches Nation Builders Corps to tackle graduate unemployment in Ghana. <music> Meanwhile, Minister of Employment and Labor Relations reveals the Ekufuado government has created close to 2 million jobs in both public and private sectors. And in international news, old divisions between rich and poor over money and ambition again threatening to limit progress in UN climate negotiations. Details of these and other stories, plus business, sports, and entertainment news in the next one hour. Let's take our first story. Beginning 1st August 2018, the 1,000 Nation Builders Corps promised by the government will start work. President Ekufu Addo, who disclosed this at the launch of the program in Kumasi, said beneficiaries will be paid 700 Ghana cities for the three year program. NACO will enhance the dignity and self esteem of our graduates and will also present them with the added benefit of efficiency and effectiveness in the delivery of some essential public services. NAPCO will be the vehicle to deliver 100,000 jobs in seven prioritized areas. Educate Ghana, heal Ghana, feed Ghana, revenue Ghana, digitize Ghana, enterprise Ghana, and civic Ghana. The website's address for the receipt of applications and any other information you may need on the scheme is www.napco.government.gh. After the end of this ceremony, the web portal will be open to begin receiving applications from graduates as long as they are citizens of this country and have duly discharged their national service obligation. President Ekufuado is addressing the May Day Parade in Kumase, and TV3 is bringing this to you live. Let's link in. Of the Board of National Pensions Regulatory Authority has been completed and will be sent shortly to the Council of State as required by law. Already, the Council of State has concluded its consultation on the composition of the boards of the National Labor Commission and the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission both of which will be inaugurated within the next week. <laughs> Let me at this stage applaud organized labor heartily for the calm industrial climate our nation has enjoyed over the last 16 months. This has been the result of the greater engagement by tripartite partners and government through the diligent and hard-working Minister for Employment and Labour Relations, the Honourable Ignatius Bafuria, Member of Parliament for Sunyani West. I look forward to the continuation of the constructive dialogue with organised labour to find mutually satisfactory solutions in, our, in order to guarantee industrial peace. I welcome the partnership of organised labour with government and the private sector so that we can work together to develop homegrown solutions to our problems. This will present us with the most effective path to realizing the vision of a Ghana beyond aid. That is why I'm setting up 
a 10-member committee comprising three members each from government, ministries of finance, planning and employment and labor relations, organized labor, and the Private Enterprise Federation to work out under the chairmanship of that good servant of the Ghanaian people, the Honorable Yao Safo Mafo, the senior minister, in the next six months, a charter on Ghana beyond aid. The charter will then be subject to scrutiny and debate by parliament and adopted as a follow-up to the coordinated program of economic and social development policy. The nation will then know in detail how we intend to move Ghana to a situation beyond aid. It is propitious then that Ghana completed yesterday its fifth and sixth reviews of the IMF program, leaving two more to be done before the completion of the program this year. This takes to three the number of successful reviews achieved by the government since August 2017. The previous administration managed to register just three reviews in three years. The end of the program means that we will have the space to design our own social and economic programs without jettisoning the fiscal discipline and proper economic management necessary to give entrepreneurs the predictability and stability to plan properly, invest boldly to grow their enterprises, and create jobs. The Charter on Ghana Beyond Aid will then come into its own. Chairperson, workers of Ghana, I must now turn my attention to a matter that should concern us all. Child labor is a problem that must be addressed in a manner consistent with our humanity, our international obligations, and in the context of our history. It is regrettable that some amongst us permit their children to undertake activities that affect their health, education, and development negatively, mainly because of their lack of awareness about or indifference to the rights of children. Ghana has ratified all the applicable international conventions and passed the Children's Act of 1998. Our children must be treated as children and do what children do. They must be in school, learning to be the pro productive citizens of tomorrow. Whilst attending school, children must only perform child work, which prepares them for the future. The daily spectacle of children roving, weaving through traffic on our roads and hawking all manner of things when they should be in school must affront our conscience, our conscience and spare us to action. Government is working with all partners towards the goal of eliminating child labor. We want to ensure that our children do not work under hazardous conditions to support themselves and their families. Before I end, Chairperson, Secretary General, Workers of Ghana, I wish to stress again that our nation cannot continue to be dependent on the production and export of raw materials and expect to be a prosperous and wealthy nation. We must turn our back on the old economy and build a value-added industrialized economy with modernized agriculture, which is neither victim nor poor of the world economic order. Our relations with the world must be characterized by an increase in trade and investment, not aid. This is the way to develop healthy relations with, our, with other countries and put Ghanaian products at the high end of the value chain in the global marketplace and create jobs for the teeming masses of Ghanaians, particularly the youth.
The vision is to build a free, prosperous, independent country, a Ghana beyond aid. While we pay tribute to past labor leaders like the great Pobi Baini, Anthony Wood, Vital Quist, John Tetega, and others, for their outstanding contribution to the liberation of our nation from colonialism. I'm hopeful that today's generation of labor leaders will also leave their own indelible marks on the history of our country as we seek to fulfill the dreams of freedom and prosperity that animated the founders of Ghanaian nationalism. Organized labor must help in the realization of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, for they are an investment in our future, the future of our youth and that of our children. We are obliged to leave them with an endearing legacy of a more prosperous, more stable, more secure, more just, and more peaceful world. Let me, in conclusion, commend the TUC for holding this national event outside Accra, just as it has done on some previous occasions. I believe more national events, like Independence Day celebrations, should follow the TUC's lead and be held outside the nation's capital. Who knows, next year, why not Tamale for Independence Day? May God bless us all in our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. That was the President Nana Adodankwa Ekufu Ado addressing the 2018 May Day Parade. Earlier on today, he launched the Nation Builders Corp, which is supposed to solve the problem of youth un un unemployment, especially graduate youth unemployment. And um, the whole program is fascinating. It has over seven models, and the models that the people would be logging on or working with includes the following. Uh, the models include Feed Ghana, Educate Ghana, Revenue Ghana, Heal Ghana, Enterprise Ghana, Digitize Ghana, and Governance Ghana. These seven models are the models that the Nation Builders Corp will be working on. And now to our next story. Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Ignatius Bafo Ewa, says the Ekufuado government has created some 1,996,4440 in both the public and private sectors through various interventions. Bafo Ewa disclosed that at the launch of the Nation Builders Call, NAPCO in Kumase. The urgency to create jobs for the teaming graduates has become paramount considering the fact that less than 10% of graduates that find jobs after their national service according to the st a study conducted by the Institute of Statistical, Social, and Economic Research. The emergence of NAPCO, therefore, cannot be more timely and accurate as it addresses the frustration, confusion, lack of hope, and direction for our youth. Therefore, your intervention is more apt and appropriate. The good news is that your government has made significant strides in addressing unemployment situation in Ghana. Between January 2017 and March 2018, Mr. President, your government has facilitated the creation of 1,096,404 jobs in both the public and private sectors through various interventions. And this happened within the formal economy. So what happened within the informal economy is not even accounted for here. I want to believe that if there is any single intervention which addresses the school-to-work transition in our country, we can't have any better program than NAPCO.
Kofi Davo is a labor expert and he joins me via phone. Mr. Kofi Davo, if you are there, please listen through. He says, almost 2 million jobs are being created in both the public and private sectors through various interventions, according to the employment minister. That must be good news. The May Day celebrations, which marked this year's theme, it was themed Sustainable Development Goals and Decent Work, the Role of Social Partners. Mr. Davo, what are your thoughts on the theme? Um, thank you very much. I think it's, it's important that uh, we are emphasizing partnership. We are emphasizing the need for us to work together. We are emphasizing the fact that in our diversity, we can have common ground to be able to deal with our problems. So on the basis of that, I find the thing very, very, very important. That, well, we recognize our different cities belong to different political parties, belong to different institutions, belong to different pressure groups, but then we can have common ground so we can work together to achieve goals that are common to all organizations. So I think the thing is up and appropriate. Okay. Ms. Adavo, decent work under the SDGs, which is the Sustainable Development Goals, what must government and social partners do to ensure its integration into the national development agenda? Uh, first of all, uh, we, ne we need to identify our priorities under the SDGs. Uh, as a country, which ones are agents, which ones are important, which ones will tackle first, which ones will tackle second. And once you have agreed and do the consent on the basis of the thing, we can agree that in terms of priority, we're going to tackle A, B, C, first, and so we work together to the attainment of the goal in accordance with the priorities that we set for ourselves. So, again, it goes to underline the theme, the need for us to work together. There's no doubt that all the SDGs, social development goals, are very, very important goals that must be achieved for us to see economic development. Okay. But it's also very important that all the parties and all, every, everybody in our society commits itself properly and at the same time to achieving this goal. Without that, we will not see development. We will see growth, but we will not see development. And I think it's important that we identify them, we educate our social partners, so all of us can put our hands up on the whole thing so that they achieve it. Okay. Hello. Mr. Davo, Mr. Davo, okay, great, great answer. Under the Nation Builders Corp, Graduates will be engaged for three years, and they will be paid 700 Ghana cities. If, if, if I'm right, that will be 23 cities per day, which is above the daily minimum wage of 9.68 cities. Would you describe this as being decent work? Um, uh, yes and no. Yes, because, first of all, it gives them an opportunity for them to come onto the labor market. And when they have come onto the labor market for the next mm -hmm. three years, there are a lot of initiatives they can take themselves. They have a responsibility to ensure that they remain on the labor market. Within the three years, they are going to acquire some experiences. What are they going to use the experiences for? So it's very, very important. It's an opportunity. It, it, it's a glass-breaking opportunity for them to come on the labor market. The, 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 the no is that it, 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 may not, not, it may not be enough. But these are young people. A lot of them may still be staying with their parents. So to that extent, we would expect that, well, it gives them a good beginning for them to be able to start life, you know. So, but then, for a graduate in today's world, to be paid $700, which is less than um, two, $200 um, in a month, is, is, is very, very inadequate. So to, that, to, to, to that extent, you may not describe it as decent work. But I am saying that within the constraints of our national economy, it's important for us to admit that we need to start from somewhere. And I think they have an opportunity yeah. to start from somewhere, to be able to come up with the labor okay. market and to make progress in ensuring that after three years of experience, there will be better place to acquire better jobs, more yeah. decent jobs. That gives them better remuneration that they are taking now. Okay. Okay, thank you very, very much, Mr. Davor, for this insightful interview. In other news, we are going to move back to May Day, which is where we just went in from. Some Ghanaian workers have been speaking to TV3 
and they say employment employers need to motivate their staff to enable them work harder and increase productivity. The introduction of incentives tend to motivate employees to give up their best at the workplace. Well, some institutions will even go to the extent of increasing their workers' salaries, giving them bonuses, and even instituting award schemes. Well, as Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark Workers' Day, we ask, what is your ideal incentive? A house, a portable one, of course, not any other... Uh, uh, quarters, a portable house where the person can at least have his peace of mind and then he will work effectively. Nowadays that they are, they are straight on time uh, so they should, I believe that we should look at this, uh, transportation uh, in general. You know it's not all of us who are having cars to, to come to work and we are supposed to come to work early and sometimes look at the traffic. If they can provide the vehicle they can give soft loans for most of the workers to get these vehicles uh, at uh, a reduced price and they can pay at a lower rate so that at least they can come to work early. More bonuses, motivations from other sources, maybe increment of salaries. So all I would say is you increase the salaries. As you increase salaries, it should come along with some other side monies that we can use to meet our needs. You know, relying on the salary alone sometimes especially those with families, you, don't, you are not able to meet some of the needs. Some of us really get a very early life, maybe 6 a.m. and then leave around 6, 7, still working. So I think they should um, motivate those of us by giving us very heavy incentives because it's very necessary. I, I want the work that I do to be recognized. And then um, I should be giving the op opportunity or the, giving them uh, uh, a lot other responsibilities. So if, um, if I start from the bottom, I should be able to, the motivation is that I should be able to reach the top. You understand what I'm saying? And so if the organization will give me that opportunity to rise through the ranks and go to the top, then I believe that is the motivation for me as an individual. But if it is like every, uh, you, you cannot rise through the ranks, then that, for me that organization is not worth working for. So they should give us like bonuses and other stuff. So it will motivate us to work hard. Rent allowance and other stuff. It all comes like together as in the money. So like in student family, awards beside our family, trying to give a soft loan from the bank to them so that their standard of living will be very, very good. For me, May Day, I don't think it's even significant for us to be celebrating because there are a lot of issues and every year they bring out a very nice and conducive ways. That part maybe would even, doesn't even help the layman at the end of the day. Away from May Day celebrations, let's go into other news. An undercover investigation conducted by Africa Eye, a new TV investigations documentary from BBC, has revealed how leakages in the Nigerian pharmaceutical industry's regulatory system is aiding the plague of addiction in cough syrup across Nigeria. The program will be aired tonight at 9 p.m. on TV3. Stay tuned. Here are excerpts. Codeine cough syrup is creating an opioid addiction crisis in Nigeria. At least 3 million bottles are drunk every day. But how does the syrup get from pharmaceutical companies to drug dealers? Undercover journalist Rona Meyer exposes the criminals behind the scam and the damage being done to millions of young people. Africa Eye, sweet, sweet codeine. Nothing stays hidden forever. BBC Africa Eye, showing tonight at 9 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. So viewers, don't miss it tonight at 9 p.m. And on MTN Video Report today, Gideon Kofi Amoyao reports on how erosion has created deep gullies, which have become a dumping site for some residents at Bamboy in the northern region. here has become a biggest threat to the resident living. About a couple of years ago, it was not like this. But due to the raining and the damping of refuse, it has expanded to the extent that the residents here cannot live comfortably. They are calling for government to come to their aid. Reporting from Bamboy, Amya Kofigidio.
You can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055 1433044 and it will be shown. That's uh, all. Now, from video, let's go to business news. Let's just take a breather and bring business news. The Institute of Energy Security is projecting a 2% increment in the prices of petroleum in the first pricing window of May. According to the Institute, the upward review is due to increase in crude oil prices in the world market. Energy analyst and Institute of Energy Security, Richmond Roxen, says the National Petroleum Authority must intervene to safeguard consumer interest. Unfortunately, consumers must be prepared to pay more uh, as the indicators are not favorable to uh, what we would have expect. If you check the international market, you realize that prices are fast going up. There's a surge. Crude oil prices uh, have gone up, currently trading around $73 per barrel from a previous average of $68 uh, per barrel. That's an increase of about 5%. You check finished products, gasoline and gas oil. Gasoline has gone up by almost 2%. Uh, gas oil went up by 4.55% as well. Uh, the only fortunate or positive indicator in this window is that the CV uh, gained some value as compared to the previous window. The University of Professional Studies, Accra, has launched its business incubator center to assist young people.
professionals to generate, develop, co-develop, redevelop business ideas into valuable ventures. Vice Chancellor of UPSA, Professor Abednego Oko Fehi Amate, tasked students to prepare themselves to grab opportunities that will be provided them. The Business Incubator Center would also serve as the nodal point of the university in terms of galvanizing critical knowledge around the interface of theory and practice for business startups in order to enhance teaching, research, and learning activities. Speaking on the launch, Chief Executive Officer of UMB, John Ewa, urged students to take advantage of the opportunity to develop their potential. For people, SMEs in uh, real estate, and they see that uh, telecom is doing well, all of a sudden they are in the telecom business. They see that somebody is selling SIM cards, and uh, is the distributor, they are in the SIM cards. Then they go into FMCG. Before you realize there's an SME that is into almost every business, that is, all businesses are suffering. The, 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 the ultimate sufferer when you enter into that terrain is the business that provides the liquidity. You take your eyes off your comfort zone, where you are getting the cash to fund the others, by the time you turn back, that business is gone. Vice Chancellor of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, Professor Abednego Oko Fehi Amate, who officially launched the Business Incubator Center, also inaugurated a nine member advisory board for the Incubation Center. Research Officer at the University, Collins Ajimambedu, taxed the students to prepare themselves to grab opportunities that will be provided them. Our focus is to blend professional training with what is happening out there so they can be fully skilled to do more in the world of work and if they want to set themselves up. As Ghanaians, we are good in recounting the success stories of others. We can quote business cases in China, in US, in the UK, in France and others. But we are not able to recount the success stories of our own. Dean of Faculty of Management Studies, UPSA Fidelis Kwanza noted that all undergraduate students took a course in entrepreneurship where students developed various business plans that were presented in class for discussions and feedback. Founder, of pres founder and president of Ashasi University, Patrick Ewa, has underscored the need for an unwavering commitment towards executing development projects outlined by government. According to Mr. Ewa, an efficient and reliable transportation system and in an effective fight against corruption is a sure way to develop Ghana's economy. He was speaking on TV3's monthly business mentoring program, Time with the Captains. Ghana in the next 10 years, I think that we're at a, at a pivotal point. There are things going on uh, with this country that if everything goes right, uh, could really mean a much, much brighter future for the country. I think the, the oil find and the, and the income that comes from that, mm -hmm. if that income is used appropriately, will be very positive for this country. Uh, there are a couple of major initiatives, um, you know, promoting education and getting people to get as much education as possible, the free SHS program, uh, the encouragement of private universities in addition to public universities. All of those things are sort of increasing the capital going into, into education. If we get the quality of education right um, and we educate everybody to a high level, this is going to be a profound change for, for the country. That's it for business. And now to other major leaders and major stories. Majority leader Osei Chaymen Sabonsu says the giving of money and gifts in politics, depending on the amount and intent, could be aimed at influencing votes. He spoke with my colleague, Kwachi Afre Nyama, who works with TV3. Are you not a beneficiary of the system, the monetization of our own politics? The, the excuse I'm politicians saying, give saying, most of the time is for transport, is for drinks. I'm saying to you that, I mean, traditionally, if, if a stool becomes vacant and you want to 
visits the king makers. You go with drinks. If you are up north, you go with cola. These are delegates. Yes, that's what I'm saying. They are the key makers. This could to influence the extent, them to some the extent, way, somehow. To the extent that um, they are the king makers and queen makers, I should say, <laughs> you have to approach them and show show respect. This could influence them. You admit? I don't what? know what I don't know what you mean. Influence the the, no, the, I don't know. the depends, direction of depends, their vote. It depends on what you do. If people lobbying, for instance, in parliament is accepted. Right? If you lobby politicians, if we lobby parliamentarians, it's accepted everywhere else. But the lobbying could translate into corruption depending on the intent one and the and the quantum of payment. For instance, if I have to if there is something to be considered, I go to Gophobia, as you usually go uh, to and you are going to consider something. Now from here, from Accra to Kofodia, I go with my, my, my vehicle. I go with my personal security. I go with my driver. And you tell me that, okay, uh, because of where you have come to, you are going to spend one night. Can I give you a thousand for your hotel accommodation and then also to cater for your bodyguard and your, your, your driver? And you take it, is it corruption? No. But if you give me 10,000, knowing that my, my bodyguard is going to lodge in a hotel that maybe may cost 150, the equally so for, for uh, my driver, then you are giving them 100 cities each to feed themselves. And maybe I'm going to a hotel that I may have to pay about 300, 400. You give me 100 cities to feed myself. That, the 1,000 cities is reasonable. But so if you give me... was not enough to influence delegates. No, I'm saying this. So, but if you give me 10,000, then it means there's something behind your, the donation that you are giving me. That, that gift certainly can be counted can as... tell mine. us how much are you willing to share, how much you gave the delegates in 2016? Are you willing to share? I'm not too sure. That's an interesting story that you just studied. In related development, the president and CEO of Imani Ghana, my very good friend, Mr. Franklin Kujo, is of the view that decentralization, if effectively carried out, will take away the issue of the highest bidder getting elected into office. Earlier on, we spoke to the majority leader um, who thinks that currently in Ghana there is this Thing we call the monetization of politics in Ghana, and that is the highest bidder gets elected into office. Um, how can we stop this? Well, that's, that's very important then. I mean, um, that's rich, because then he's been in it, so he understands the challenges with our politics. How do we stop this? I, I, it's a very important question I, that keeps coming all the time. Let's make elections and not, not to be seen really as a, as, a, as a do and die affair. I mean, that's the, one of the most important things we need to do. And let's start reducing this whole business of centralizing um, the, the, the nomination, the appointment of people at the center seats of government. You see, if we effectively decentralize, where we expect a lot of development to happen at the local level, I think it will be one way of reducing this edge to by all means be in parliament, by all means be at the presidency or something else. It's not the fact that we have to be electing a lot of people without retaining value, but in actual fact, making sure that there's governance and its benefits at the lower level. These are the only ways I suspect we can reduce this whole monetization of our democracy. I mean, you can enforce laws and say people should not do that um, and punish people, because I've heard that a lot as well. We can even ensure that political parties and representatives file their returns, which is another thing. It's in the law, but it's not being respected. Let's make sure that representation is really at the grassroots rather than just a few places where people can get into politics and then think that they've arrived. Now let's take 
a quick break. We'll be back with sports. Everything you need to know. Captivating. Reliable, credible, and breaking news. All at your fingertips. We found out Samoa Gian! Super finish! Being on top of the news has never been easy. Visit us at www.3news.com for all your reliable news. 3 News, news at your fingertips. Log on to www.3news.com for more news and updates of our major stories. Join us on Facebook 3 News GH for live streaming and comments on our page. Like and follow us on Twitter at 3 News GH and at 3 Sports GH. Like our pictures on Instagram, TV3 Network. If you missed our live shows, watch a playback on YouTube, TV3 GH. TV3, first in news, best in entertainment. Hello, welcome to News at 10. We're live from our studios here at Adisau. When you miss News 360 at 7 p.m. because of a busy schedule, we'll serve you again with a smart recap tonight at 10 p.m. with a detailed dissection of the major news of the day so you are never left behind. They punch my face, use the gun to hit my wrist. News at 10. News with a broader perspective. My name is Stephen Enti. See you tonight at 10 Sports news segment is brought to you by Cowbell. Kotoko coach Pa Kwesi Febin is under pressure to quit after his sides reverse in the super clash against Accra Hasofolk on Sunday. The cries have grown louder from a cross-session of the club's fans for the dismissal of the under-fire coach who stated two March days earlier that he wasn't a magician to change the fortunes of the club after just two months. The Kumasi club has lost four out of ten matches they have played in this season. Things aren't going too well. There are quite a number of players on the injury list, but the fans insist that the sole head to carry the blame is the coach. I'm very disappointed in the coach, Park Kwesi Fabian. We didn't know the kind of pattern he was playing. Whether it's 4 4 2, whether it's 4 3 2 1, or whether it's 4 5 1. This is very shambolic. We don't need this thing. There should be an improvement to our game. This is very, very shambolic. We need an improvement. Taking a defeat from a very poor side, a crack has of That is very bad. Very, very bad. Coach, and yet, selection, or yeah, and MYA. So, doctor should be serious and tell us something. Because his coach wouldn't help us in any way. His aim of winning us the African title can't be done by this coach. The calls from the fans are loud, but management says they will stick with Parkwisi Fabian and that he has signed a long term contract with the club. Obeda Champong is communications manager for Kumasiya Sante Kotoko. Parkwisi Fabian, he came in with new system, new strategy. It was definitely going to take time from, for the boys to adapt to. We are still going to stick with him. We are going to keep him as, as our head coach. We've said it earlier on that he has our backing. He has our full support. And no matter what, um, we just need to support him day in, day out. And we believe he's the man for the job and he's definitely going to get us to the right place. Now away from local football, Kotoko and Haas, let's go to international football. Bayern Munich are without Wenger, Ian Robin for their Champions League semi-final second league.
31 goals in 34 league appearances for Liverpool this season. The Egypt star, the first African winner of the award, also won the Professional Footballers Association Player of the Year Award in April. That's it for sports. Up next, we have international news. All divisions between rich and poor over money and ambition are again threatening to limit progress in UN climate negotiations. Discussions between negotiators from nearly 200 countries have resumed in Germany, aiming to flesh out the rules on the Paris Climate Pact. But developing countries say they are frustrated with the lack of leadership from the developed world. Commitments to cut carbon are still woefully inadequate, they said. 2018 marks a critical stage in the global climate negotiations process. By the end of this year, governments will meet in Poland to finalize the so-called rule book of the Paris deal, agreed in the French capital in December 2015. China offered the Dominican Republic a $3.1 billion package of investments and loans to get them to sever ties with Taiwan, a Taiwan official said on Tuesday, after the Caribbean nation switched allegiance to China in a diplomatic blow to the self-ruled island. China said there were no economic preconditions. Taiwan, claimed by China as its own, has former relations now with only 19 countries many of them poor nations in Central America and the Pacific, like Belize and Nauru. China says Taiwan is simply a wayward province with no right to state-to-state -state ties. China and Taiwan have tried to poach each other's allies over the years, often dangling generous aid packages in front of developing nations, though Taipei struggles to compete with an increasingly powerful China. An Australian magistrate has ruled that Vatican Treasurer Cardinal George Pell will stand trial on historical sexual assault charges. Cardinal Pell formally pleaded not guilty to the charges on Tuesday. He has consistently denied any wrongdoing. An Australian magistrate ruled on Tuesday that there was enough evidence for the case to proceed to trial on some charges, but not on others. Cardinal Pell, 76, is Australia's most senior Catholic and one of the most powerful officials in the Vatican. He was given a large police guard as he entered the Melbourne Magistrates Court in front of dozens of media representatives and members of the public. That's it for international news. Let's take a break and we are back with entertainment news. To every story, there's a deeper meaning, a host of angles, which when reported with the highest ethics of journalism, bring out the perspectives that matters most to you. That's what News 360 is all about. I seek to climb higher, dig deeper, and go further to bring you 360 degrees of the news and what happens thereafter. I'm Natalie Fort. Join me on News 360 every weekday at 7 p.m. Hello, I'm Michael Otierji, and I'm poised to give you sports news at its very best. If it happens in the world of sports, this is your platform, Sports Unlimited. All the news, the exclusive interviews, the analysis, the scores, the statistics, and what it means for your favorite team, your favorite player, and your favorite sport. Sports Unlimited every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Sports Unlimited. Sports news at its very best. Sports Unlimited, Tuesdays to Thursdays, 10.30 p.m., right here on TV3. There are lots of amazing stories out there. What we do on News 360 is to bring to you the most compelling news by teasing out the right pieces that bring the stories to life. My job is to present to you the news in the most gripping manner and asking the critical questions that bring out the needed detail out of the stories. My name is Alfred Okunze. Join me on News 360, Monday through to Friday, 7 p.m. on air and online only on TV3.
Before we do entertainment news, let's just do some quick stories. A community conservation specialist at the Calgary Zoological Society, Donna Shepherd, has recommended linking environmental conservation efforts to human development. This, she maintained, would ensure that community members actively participate and cooperate in protecting and preserving their environment. Donna Shepherd was speaking at the Nature Conservation Research Center agreement signing in the Volta region. The Wildlife Division of the Forestry Commission and two civil society organizations signed the agreement to protect and prevent the extinction of the Western Sitatunga species. The Sitatunga is an amphibious swamp-dwelling antelope found throughout Central Africa. However, the animal was thought to have gone extinct in West Africa until it was discovered in the Avu Lagoon area some 13 years ago. In the years that followed, concerted efforts were directed at community education on the advantages of conserving the habitat of the rare species. We often talk about, oh, it's so important to raise awareness in the community so that people know what we're doing. But awareness is just the start. There's also things you can do, plant-based product development that doesn't destroy the, the plant, but you can harvest it in a sustainable way that it continues to grow into the future, but also is a product for uh, people to purchase. And so if community members can do that, then they make money from conservation and know that that benefit is there because they have protected the Sitatunga. Donna Shepherd presented a dummy check for 540,000 Ghana cities to the partners covering the first year of the five-year conservation project. The first time this was be done, monkeys will be along the heavy Loto River, but now they have killed all. So that's why we are challenging that this animal should be there. So in future, the children should know that uh, the Sitatuga being Chimasa in the, our air language, because it can dive under the water. Executive Director of the Development Institute, Ken Kinney, observed the Avu Lagoon is a national asset that must be conserved and protected to achieve sustainable development in the area. Human beings depend on nature to provide products and its functions. So if we don't take into consideration uh, nature conservation, this country cannot go anywhere. Other stakeholders urge Ghanaians to take environmental conservation seriously, not only as a means of safeguarding healthier and safer environments for animal species, but also for revenue-generating opportunities. Environmental conservation is key to our development as a country. So do I encourage all of us who are advocating for the Atiwa forest not to be mined so that it won't be mined. Atiwa, here we go, environmental protection. Now to another story, an undercover investigation conducted by Africa Eye, a new TV investigations documentary from the BBC has revealed how leakages in the Nigerian pharmaceutical industry's regulatory system is aiding the plague of addiction to cough syrup across Nigeria. The program will be aired tonight on TV3 at 9 p.m. I'm encouraging you to stay tuned. Here are excerpts to the program. Codeine cough syrup is creating an opioid addiction crisis in Nigeria. At least three million bottles are drunk every day. But how does the syrup get from pharmaceutical companies to drug dealers? Undercover journalist Rona Meyer exposes the criminals behind the scam and the damage being done to millions of young people. Africa Eye, sweet, sweet codeine. Nothing stays hidden forever. BBC Africa Eye, showing tonight at 9pm on TV3. Don't miss it. Viewers should stay tuned. Definitely tonight on TV3 is happening live. 9 p.m., don't miss it. And now let's go into entertainment news. Is it right for celebrities to delve into politics? It is a major question that has been asked. To many, it could lead to one's career crashing into the worst case scenario. In an interview with Owusu Warai in 2017, the late high life musician, 
who is deceased, Jewel Aka, spoke bitterly about how venturing into politics made him unpopular and crushed his career. So Arise. Arise for God. Endorsing and accepting to compose the NDC's party anthem to Jewel Aka triggered the woes of his career. Let's talk about how your affiliation to the party cost you. The people were saying that Jewel Aka is our position. Not knowing he was going with NDC. So we will never buy his record, go to his show, and so true they did so. Did it happen just once or it kept happening? It kept happening. And even, 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 I don't want to... <laughs> the move made the then top star unpopular to the very fans who once cherished him. And Kumasi, if I reach Kumasi, you will come back Kumasi. Ah. Performing for hours to empty seats in Kumasi remained one of Jewel Aka's unforgettable career low points. I fixed my instrument. Letters. My instrument, letters. That time, nobody have instrument more than me. They were standing at the back there. Jewel Yambo, Kwasia, And nobody came. I play, I play, I play, I play. I... To 10 o'clock, nobody. So I stopped the band, pack the instruments, we go back to Accra. We have suffered, I have suffered. And that was Jiwalaka sharing his story, you know, how his endorsing politics affected his career. I mean, over the years, Jiwalaka is one musician who, who deserves to be honored. Uh, and TV3 did so many documentaries on him together with Musica. Now, his career spanned over four decades. The late highlight for Jiwalaka remains one of Ghana's topmost musical legends. He was honored at the Musica Grand Ball event that passed last year. And I remember clearly Honorable Kennedy of Japan promised to support him with a thousand Ghana CDs every month, which he has been doing until lately. His unquenchable passion for music saw Jiwalaka, the pride of the enzymes, with many laurels. He won so, so many awards. Here are scenes of some of the unforgettable golden moments that Juelaka had during his career. <laughs> His exceptional talent won Jewel many admirers, including key political figures. The Asumdre Hene composer and father was a lovely family man. Jewel's outstanding works and achievements is well recognized. The native of Aksim received many accolades and citations for his positive exploits and for helping to grow the high life genre. <laughs> Fare thee well, Jewel Aka. That was Jewel Aka, some memories from Jewel Aka, and Jewel Aka lived a good life. I, we thank, on behalf of the music industry, which I represent as president, even though I'm broadcasting today, I want to thank everybody who has helped Jiwalaka from Xylophone Media, the Minister of Tourism, Katrina Afiku, Musica, and all the other bodies, Gamro, who were there for Jiwalaka. I'm very hopeful that his one week will be coming up very soon and we'll all be there to support. And now let us just round up into the end of the news. Today you have been entertained and of course you've listened to me throughout. My name is Bai Sosei Kufo, President of the Musicians Union of Ghana, a song stress, a musician, a composer, and uh, a leader in the music industry. I would not complete this without giving you a line or two. 
Today is May Day, wherever you are driving to. I know May Day is a holiday. People will be moving out. Guys will be drinking, sitting at places. Please just remember, when you drink, don't drive. And just be careful and know that God, who is a faithful one, is there for you and is there for you always. He loves you. Don't miss it. T.A.T.A. -T -A, Papa Driver. T.A.T.A. -T 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 -A, Mr. Passenger. Passenger. T.A.T.A. -T -A, motor Rider. Yem famo yem bai. Oh, Kwabo. Let's just all be careful the way we drive on our roads. Let's stay safe and let the roads be good. The good driver is the one that goes and comes back alive. Drive alive. Codeine cough syrup is